So this is a response to the video entitled Future of Gaming, Death of Consoles by Mr. Evolution 777. And in this video, he uh, talks about his opinions on, on which is going to be stronger in the future, PC or uh, console gaming. And most of the points that he brings up, I agree with. That he, that, that he basically, the, the general point that he comes to eventually is that consoles are limited because they don't offer quite as much range and quite as much depth as PC games. And I agree with that because PCs have a lot more memory and a lot more processing power and a lot more ability to throw data around and do things on the fly than consoles. Their consoles are pretty much limited to the data that they can store on the disk whereas PC games can have data on the disk and data on the hard drive and more data that you pulled off the internet onto the hard drive and all kinds of stuff. There's, there's way more information available for the PC games. But um, so that's the basic point that he makes, and I relatively agree with that, but there, there are, it's basically the things that he doesn't mention that I'd like to bring up in, um, not necessarily so much in rebuttal, so much as a counterpoint maybe, I guess, but um, the first thing I noticed is that he doesn't really seem to acknowledge that there are console-based games out there that have online modes in the form of multiplayer and whatnot. But I, he's a very intelligent person. I've watched a lot of his videos, so I know he's an intelligent guy, so I know he knows that, that it's out there. So I'm just going to try to glaze past right that right now. But um, then he goes on to say that what type of a game that he feels adults want. He's obviously an adult, so he knows what adults want. I myself am also an adult. I like to think of myself as such anyway, 30 years old. So yeah, I hope that qualifies. But um, in my experience, there are also quite a few adults who enjoy playing multiplayer games on consoles. I mean, yes, you do have to wade through a large amount of children to find these adults. But they're there. I've met them. My clan on SOCOM Confrontation, TDH, and our affiliate, the Brotherhood, TBH, they, um, it's mostly adults. I, there, there's mostly people, you know, 26, 27, 30, 34, 35. we got a few 40-year-olds and older than that, too. So, you know, it's not just kids playing these games. And then um, there's adults doing it, too. So then he goes on and he brings up the point of creation and uh, construction and socialization. And I'd like to cite MAG as an example, but I've run across a few clans comprised mainly of adults whom I can hear chatting it up about their everyday life as they totally dominate the opposing team that's comprised mainly of children. Now, I do not disagree that more adults play something like The Sims than do children. You know, uh, the girlfriend of the guitarist in my band loves to play The Sims. I simply point out that there are adults who enjoy blowing shit up as well. Also, um, more and more first-person shooter games are adding a developmental aspect to the game by implementing experience and upgrades and unlock systems. I want to cite MAG and Call of Duty. Most of the Call of Duty games made since Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 have included experience and upgrade systems, and even SOCOM Confrontation has now implemented a, a specialization system that awards you for doing things repeatedly and whatnot. But um, the, um, the other point that I'd like to bring up is that there are a lot of gamers out there that just want simplicity, that there are adults out there that don't really, really want to have to do anything more than put a disc in a tray, and, and to the computer layman, PC gaming can actually be a little bit complicated. And like I just mentioned, there are a significant number of people out there who enjoy playing games but don't want to do more than just pop in a disc and go. Sometimes it's not that simple with PC gaming, and people fluent in PCs and Macs may not see it this way, but to the computer noob, it uh, sometimes getting online PC game to uh, function properly is simply out of their grasp. A friend of mine who refused my help, you know, was offering it to him, and he said, no, I don't need your help, man. In fact, no, I don't want your help. I can do this myself. He, uh, he sat struggling for two hours trying to install the copy of uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which I purchased and then never installed because I wound up getting it on my 360. So I played it there and never put it on my PC, and I sat there laughing as he struggled to find the right patches and updates and upgrades and all that shit to allow him to play online, since the game was a little bit out of date at the time. And uh, when he got past all that gobbledygook and saw the, uh, the just convoluted list of servers where he could play, he simply turned off the computer and asked me if I wanted to play Gears of War 2. Uh, I laughed and said, sure, why not? Um, but so the people like you and me, you know, find it easy to pop, you know, get make sure everything's right and play a game on the PC. There are a lot of guys out there who 
it's not easy for them because they never really bothered to learn their PC. They just want to buy their PlayStation, pop in a disc, and, and play. And they have money to spend. And I think those are the people that are going to help keep the console gaming industry alive. And let's not forget the children, even though children are sometimes more affluent in computer than, than, um, uh, than, than the adults are. It's still, you know, this younger children just going to pop in a disc and play. And um, one thing I kind of, I'm just kind of bouncing from point to point here. But um, then he mentions a lot of how he likes the developmental things, and he mentions how World of Warcraft has this ranging um, variable landscaping. And um, actually, the one point I thought of specifically was Sacred 2 Fallen Angel. I played that on my PlayStation 3, and it has almost every attribute that he described, save for some of the really specific things like tailoring and stuff like that. You can't really do that kind of thing. But... Um, most of the things that he described about liking about World of Warcraft, Sacred 2 has on a console. But uh, even though I will fully admit that when I first played Sacred 2, I thought to myself, huh, this seems a lot like World of Warcraft in many respects. So, you know, that just kind of verifies a lot of the points he makes towards the end of his video. But it does have a lot of what he describes. So basically, that's, that's really what I have to say, is that I think that the consoles, like, it, like the video implies, they're not quite on life support yet, and I think that there are enough people who want simplicity in their gaming that, they're, that, that are going to keep this industry alive for quite some time. I mean, I personally, dis I, I fucking hate the Wii, but the fact that that sells more consoles than anything else across the world kind of states, you know, that consoles are being innovative and finding ways to keep themselves alive, and... Um, because I don't really see a whole lot of motion control capture stuff happening on PC. I mean, it may, I, you know, fuck. It could happen. You know, the Lord only knows what's possible. But, um, so, there you have it. That's, that's basically the points I have to make, and, uh, take it easy.